if you knew that there were beings that could control your body, control your feelings, in other words, they had a console, and on the console they had a bunch of dials, and one of the dials is make you feel sick, make you feel pain, make you feel aggravated, completely control all of the feelings that you feel. And they are conscious beings and they do this to you. How would you feel about that? I'm going to tell you that the feelings that you get when you feel sick, when you feel uncomfortable, everything to do with feelings that you have with your body are conscious beings in another place that know what's going on with you. Almost as if it was the Truman Show, but the Truman Show where they also had machines that could, that, that could make you feel things, unpleasant things, and manipulate your body. So basically make you a puppet. Those exist. Those kind of beings exist. And, you know, knowing that they exist makes you very, very angry that you're manipulated by other beings. And yet you do not know where they are. You know how they do it. I just told you they've got some kind of technological ability to manipulate you, which means that your whole human life, your whole human scene that you think is just kind of random, you know, you wandering around and bumping into other people, is not. They run the whole thing. The whole of your human life is run by other beings that are not pleasant beings, you know, and these beings, you know, they pretend to be your friend sometimes, when other times they turn dark and they really use their console to, to make you miserable. They have the whole thing under their control. Now, these beings might be called archons. They're definitely from... Well, they might be in another dimension, but uh, not necessarily. It's very hard to figure that out. All the things are that it's true. There are beings that have got abilities to make you feel shitty. Some stories say that it's maybe spiritual powers... But it may not be spiritual powers. It may be all technological. It's certainly something that could be done with advanced technology. And then to figure out that you are their pets and they're miserable creatures and they, they do things to you. You know, like when you, if you think of a child that falls down and hits its head on, you know, the corner of a coffee table and then to learn that that child it wasn't just a random accident of it learning how to walk some being actually made it do that so that the child would cry and have a horrible headache and you know and then you learn that a being does that what would you feel about that kind of being i'm not bullshitting these things really do do these things to humans and yet cannot figure out where they are and how to stop them. Wouldn't you just hate those things? And then these, these things create things called religions. They create like the, the Jesus religion, which is all about forgiveness, forgiving your enemy. And you learn that they do this so that they're trying to get you not to hate them. But it's all manipulation. And, you know, you think that your, your great religion is all about forgiveness, forgiving the evil ones so that they can go on and on and on. You know, it's almost like the mafia and the, 
the Catholic Church, you know, the mafia uh, is a big supporter of, of Christianity because Christianity is all about forgiving people. Forgive them all because they don't know what they're doing. But it's not true. They know exactly what they're doing and they manipulate you. God knows how many lifetimes. And, you know, they create these religions that you're, that you're brainwashed into that this is the highest form of, uh, consciousness is forgiving the ones that, that are evil to you. Is it really? No, it's not. The highest form, I don't know if you ever get there, but the highest form of consciousness is to get to a point where you'll find these beings and you'll delete them from existence because they are the most horrible things, horrible, horrible things. They will never stop manipulating you and your children, and your friends, and your parents, and humans in particular. They predate on humans. Uh, planet Earth is basically a place where they farm people. They farm you. And they, they create horrible situations everything horrible that ever happened to you that think it's just random that's the human condition the human condition is not chaotic it is actually by design these beings run you like puppets and they have enormous scripts enormous plays in consciousness i've told you before Sananda, who calls itself an uh, ascended master, well, that's one of them. But there's plenty of other ones. No, I don't know what else to call them, but you could look up archons and you can think of, you know, if you watch the original Star Trek episodes from the 1960s about beings that have incredible powers over humans, that is true. That is true. Trelane is one of them. Uh, the Q in the Star Trek The Next Generation is another one of these beings that can set these kind of things up. These are horrible, horrible beings. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And the only thing I would do is delete them because you cannot teach them anything. You cannot teach them. These beings have been doing it for lifetimes and lifetimes. They do not learn. They do not learn. But there's no learning with them. They just do this because they're bored and they like to play with you. Deletion is the only thing I can think of that you that I would do if I had the power. I don't have the power, but I know they exist and I know that they're playing with us here on planet Earth. And they've been, I don't know how long they've been doing it. There's a great veil that they use between us and them. But for me, they've let me know that I can tell you because they get, maybe they get some secret pleasure. Uh, maybe by you hearing about this and wondering about this, maybe it's another way of they can torture you. So if that's the case, I'm sorry. But I am telling you the truth. If you watch Star Trek, you will know that there are extraterrestrial kind of beings that can do this. And I'm telling you, they are doing it here on planet Earth. And if I had the power, I would delete them from reality. In other words, I would kill them. I would kill them like they were a mosquito that was biting me or a sand fly or a deer fly or a horse fly or a setse fly. That's what I would do. They were the most, dis well, I don't, they're just, That's what they what need to be done. And, and they laugh because they're, you know, they're behind this, this. And, you know, they're, they're so sick and twisted. You know, they're so sick and twisted to let you know that they have the power. And they do have the power. And they know exactly what you're saying and what you're doing. And they're so twisted, they enjoy it. If I could delete them and kill them I would, but I can't. All I can know is that they are there. You know, in Carlos Castaneda's books, they call them the predator. And 
strangely enough, in Castaneda's book, he says that humans basically are borrowing the mind of the predator. Our mind is basically borrowed from the predator. I do encourage you to read Carlos Castaneda's books. Uh, it gives you a different reality, a different view of reality. Uh, the people in Carlos Castaneda's world do not think in Christian terms. They do not think about things really in, well, good and evil as sort of like between the devil and a benevolent God fighting. They don't think of it that way so much. But they do think about, you know, predators and prey. And humans, unfortunately, in the world we live in, we are prey. Knowing that you have predators predating on you makes you feel sick. Makes you feel very uncomfortable because you don't have weapons against these kind of beings. And once you know that it's real, the human condition becomes much less, you know, we're just on a, a planet and, you know, we evolved from apes or think that's lies. It's all lies. It's all lies. All that stuff is total lies. We are farmed by some other kind of beings. And they get their jollies out of farming us and controlling our minds. They're like the sick, you know, the, just the, this, I don't know what you call it, you know, like in, in grade three, some child that's just twisted child, a twisted child that, you know, has gets a secret pleasure at torturing you. You know, everyone knows those kind of kids. They're, they're just the bad kids that you just don't like, you know. Well, you know, some some people, you know, if you're big and strong or you just get get angry enough, you go and you'll punch out that kid. I did. I punched out one of those kids when I was in about grade four. You know, it's how you deal with bullies. In the end, the only, you know, the, the, the Christian way of, of treating other people, turn the other cheek and give them your cloak and you know, that doesn't work. Everyone knows it. But why do they teach this? I don't know why they teach this. The only thing that works with bullies is you have to be strong and you have to go and stand up to the bully and punch them in the nose. Punch them in the eye. Give them a good shit kicking. That is how you treat bullies. These beings are bullies and I don't think they're... Around here, they're not in physical form. If they are, they're very good at, at you know cloaking themselves. But they have these abilities, you know, they could call it psionic abilities. It's like telepathy and telekinesis, and they can use it on you. And they're not benevolent by any stretch of the imagination. They really enjoy putting you in situations and making you squirm. When are you going to have a chance to find out about this? Well, keep listening to me, cookie old me. But this is my reality, and I know who they are. Where they are, I do not know. I mean, if it's if you've got technology, everyone knows that if, even on planet Earth, if you've got satellite technology, you can be in Las Vegas in the desert at an army base, and you can be using satellites to go and monitor what's going on over in Saudi Arabia or Yemen or Afghanistan. So, you know, the technologies are very advanced and you can have very stupid people, you know, that are, that are doing this because they've got the technology, you know, misuse of technology. Or it could be beings that have got some kind of natural abilities to do this to you. I don't know how they do it, but they do do it. And they set up all kinds of very weird things. It may be like yesterday, some weird person came and rang my doorbell. Said they want to do yard work. There's no yard work to be done in March when you live in the snow belt. The snow didn't need shoveling. 
you know, and then you think, okay, well, is this guy casing the joint? They want to break in, you know, what is it? Well, I'm telling you, maybe that's what you think from her human terms, but when you know that there's other beings around that are setting up these things, what do they really want to do when they go and they put somebody at your back door ringing your doorbell? I don't know. I don't know. The benefit of it all is it keeps you on your toes. And perhaps you find it interesting. But if you're drunk all the time, you're not going to figure it out. You know, you have to be very alert. And Carlos Castaneda's people in his books are very much about being alert. Although, strangely enough, Don Juan Matus was always smoking ma magic mushrooms. He was constantly doing magic mushrooms. I don't. But it makes you very uncomfortable to know that you're in a Truman Show kind of environment. If you haven't seen The Truman Show, watch Jim Carrey's The Truman Show about how his whole life was manipulated by others. That, I'm telling you, is the truth about your life. It's the truth about my life. And, you know, are we all going to laugh at the end? Right now, I don't feel like laughing. I feel totally manipulated. I feel icky. It's an icky, icky feeling to know that you're totally... I mean, everyone knows that the smartphones that you use, the NSA and different... Be, different humans can use these to watch you. The smart TVs that you paid, you know, they got them on special because they're smart TV from Walmart or God knows where you got them, but it's sitting there and it's got cameras in there that's watching you. It's Big Brother. It's George Orwell. And uh, they've got you all on tape, everything you've ever done. And it's beyond just camera work, you know. It's like they're right in your mind. So if you look up the Beast 666 computers on uh, Biblio Caplades, it's a weird website. I can't pronounce it or can't say it. But look up Beast 666 computers, Pine Gap, Alaska, and Las Vegas. And try, and it almost gets back to the simulation theory, you know, that our bodies are actually simulated bodies created by some kind of advanced computers. And everything that goes on is run through advanced computers, and then they use various technologies to control your brain, you know. They send you some kind of holographic light that gets right into your brain and you know it teases your neurons into thought forms you know synthetic telepathy it will make you feel good i hope it doesn't i feel sick and icky but it is the way it is and these beings want you to know this it's almost like the illuminati when they go and they have these these really weird ceremonies in the halftime at the Super Bowl, Lady Gaga and whatever, and, you know, they do the horned beast symbols, you know, like this or whatever, so that they let the people know right out in the open that they're real, or are they just actors acting like they're Illuminati? It's for you to decide, but if you look into this thing, you'll learn how sick these fucks are. Sick, sick, sick. Six, six, six. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you other than go on Netflix, watch the original Star Trek, uh, watch Star Trek The Next Generation episodes with the Q. Um, you, they, they played around with these ideas that there were beings that had abilities to uh, affect what humans could do. And the original Star Trek, there's an episode with Lieutenant Uhura and Captain Kirk. This was way back in the 1960s, back when we had great race, great, great amounts of racism and 
Uh, it was the first interracial kiss on national television. And that was an episode where beings could control Captain Kirk and Lieutenant Uhura and force them to kiss. Uh, those things are true in my experience. What can you do about it? Well, I don't know. I don't know if there are extraterrestrials that are your allies that are going to come in and kick ass and take names. I don't know. Some people say the Pleiadians and the Arcturians are going to... I don't know. Maybe that's pie in the sky. Maybe it's all invented. It's all invented by the beings that control us. <sighs> anyway, I'm very yawny. I'm Harry Weaver, your narrator. <laughs>